going on guys? It is your boy Cecil here, bring guys yet another video here today, bring guys another mascot design tutorial, help kind of video going on yet again. So I know you guys love these videos and I'm very very happy because of course I've been getting really good at mascot designing, at least I feel like because I've been practicing a lot. So yeah, one thing I did not do in my actual mascot design tutorial, if you guys have yet to see that, how to actually create your own mascot design, sketching, the process, and also like putting in an illustrator and stuff like that. It's, uh, uh, I put the link in the description down below for you guys to watch this very, very good video, very informative, I really like it, a lot of people seem to like it as well, so that's of course I'm going to continue. So, one thing I did not do, however, was actually apply the text and like kind of like finalize the logo in a way, just because for me specifically, doing mascot designing, one of the one things I just could not do was the simplest part where I feel, which I would, you know, feel like theoretically think, is the text, and I couldn't just seem to actually, like, I guess apply the text where it kind of looks like it was still in the logo design. Like right here, the text looks like it's within the actual logo design that wasn't added previously. It felt like it was added, you know, like, you know, like thought about, you know what I mean? But this is just added like a nice quick little text and it, it works. I really like how I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you guys this today, right here, right now. And the, uh, I think the font that I'm using, by the way, is Built Tilting, I think again. So yeah, that's one of those fonts that are in my font pack. You guys want to go ahead and check that out. The video did really, really well. You guys were like really freaking loved it. So if you guys have yet to see uh, that video or get any of those cool fonts, just, I'll put that uh, video in the description down below as well because, of course, mascot designing, you need cool texts as well. So, okay, let's get this thing going. Really quickly, I'm going to point this out. So you can see the outside stroke that I have, it's actually a color. Now, there's a specific reason I do that, just because I feel like, one, it looks a little better, in my opinion, if you have like a black stroke followed by a uh, blue or, you know, excuse me, not blue, but a color stroke on the outside, on the farther outside, just because it kind of makes your text uh, your text look a little bit better in my opinion now what I mean by that is with whatever's inside whatever colors are inside your actual mascot right I have like grays blues whites within my mascot design and then I have white on the outside but then uh, if I left white on the outside I mean, it would just kind of be like weird I feel like a black stroke on the outside completely surrounding your mascot design will look like really good like it would just kind of like finish it all and then if you add an extra color of layer uh, excuse me an extra layer of color excuse me and then it would just kind of like fill the actual the actual logo even more. And then when you apply text, it's like this is basically what it looks like, right? Without it. So without the text, this is kind of what it looks like. It looks good, right? But if I add like the color on the outsides, and then I add the actual text, there's just something that just looks really good, of course, when you're actually adding the text with the color in the background. So if the reason why I say that is because if you had like the middle here and this was a color of blue, let's just say this was blue, right? Your text was white. Let's just say this was white. Right, but then your stroke on the outside was black as well. It would kind of look very, very messy or very, very bland. It would kind of look empty, and that's why I want to like let you guys know if you if you use two different strokes on the outside for your like your finalization, um, it just looks good in my opinion. I know you guys will figure it out yourselves. I know you guys will figure out your your specifics, your your preferences. Um, this is just like kind of, kind of like my preference. So I want to let you guys know that before I start, just because I want to, you know, if you want to get it to look exactly or at least remotely close or structurally close as mine, that is probably going to be one of the reasons why it does not look like mine in like the retrospect of like um, the text looking like it's actually within the logo design. So hope you guys understood that little explanation and let's just get this thing going. If you hear my chair squeak, I am sorry. I guess it's time for me to get a new, I think I need to just like buy a good chair. Like I, I gotta stop buying those like $70 staple chairs. There's a thing. Um, Okay, so we're going to delete that and we're going to get this thing going. So the first thing you're going to want to do, of course, is actually make a backplate uh, surrounding, you know, secondary color of a color on the background. So on um, the background of this logo here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my completely done logo design, my mascot design. I keep saying logo, my mascot design here. I'm going to hold alt. While I'm holding alt, I'm going to go ahead and left click and then drag this below. So I'm going to drag whatever I'm selecting, this, this layer here, right below this other layer. This will make a duplicate for me within Illustrator. You can do that. Or you can go ahead and take the actual layer, throw it into the new page, and that'll also make a duplicate as well. So whatever works for you, it's all good. Either both of them do the same exact thing. Um, so but with this one you're gonna do, with the duplicated one, you're gonna go ahead and select the target layer, which is a circle here. This will select everything within this folder, everything within this layer, and that way you can move it, do whatever with it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine them all. That way this entire shape that you guys see here is actually gonna be completely filled, or excuse me, uh, completely like, yeah, basically filled without actually you know having to pencil out the outside or pick out which layer is on the far outside. Nope, you can just basically take the entire thing, select it, go to Windows, Pathfinder, what the Pathfinder is going to do is give you guys this option. It says Shape Modes, right? And one of the options, the first one is actually Unite. So as you can imagine, it connects all the actual vectors within the actual layer, like I said, just like so. When I click it, I'm going to drag this layer out because every other layer is empty. Just, gonna, just so you know, I can make it a little easier. 
and you can see this layer right here now is just one solid basic layer of like the entire thing on the outside so that works perfectly for me and i'm very happy with the outcome so that's what i'm going to use for my actual stroke on the outside now to apply the stroke of course you're going to want to of course get the actual color of the your 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 secondary color whatever color you want to put on the outside and you're going to put that on your stroke so you're going to turn off your fill which is this one right here the first one the one that's on a foreground kind of you're going to turn that off by just clicking on none you want to go to your stroke here click on the stroke color double click on this and then you want to apply that color like i said before to the actual stroke which is this nice little blue that i got going on here and then you want to make sure you have your stroke table actually up as well so you're going to go to windows stroke and you're going to make sure this is uh, open, right? So for your line of stroke, you want to put this on the outside. Now, the first one is going to be centered. The second one is going to be the inside. And the last one is going to be the outside of the line of stroke. So you want to make sure you click on that one because this is going to basically mean your, your stroke is going to go on the farther outside of this path here, which is going to be more quicker when, of course, when you put your weight up here. Right? I'm just going to put this to 50 because I already know I kind of want it at 50. Or no, 30, I think. Eh, 50, I think it was. Yep. So 50. So you can see it's on the outside. The stroke is on the outside. If it was on the inside, well, you won't be able to see it. If it was in the center, well, you're going to have to put your, uh, your your points up a lot more just because it's actually shared. It's kind of sharing the actual the width between the outside and the inside. That's why I'm going to put it on the outside. And you can see it's really big now because these points are still big. Put this on 50. And you can see that if I put this on 50, just like so, now it's just on the outside. It looks good. looks clean. And then we're good to go. So I just want to make sure you guys understood that just in case you're not the best in Illustrator or whatnot. Um, so yeah, once you have this, you're pretty good. We're going to make a new layer above everything. So click new layer. Take your text tool, which is basically T on your keyboard, right? For the shortcut. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it around uh, 500 is pretty good. And for me, I'm in a 4K by 4K document size, so my points might be bigger or smaller depending on what your document size is yourself. I'm going to go ahead and put it in, what is the word, twist, right? I believe the font that I used for this was Built Tilting, like I said previously. It's the bolded one, though. And I'm going to go ahead and just put this right here. Now, the cool thing about my example was, if you guys remember it, I actually had mine looking like it had like a little bulge or like a, like arcs and stuff like that. Basically, you can do the same exact thing. It's, it's the same exact tool, I believe, is within Photoshop. I don't know what it's called. It's called like the wrap tool or something like that, I believe. But the same thing follows here, right? The envelope tool. I believe that's what it's called in Photoshop as well. So you want to click this, right? Make envelope. And you're going to see these different styles that you can actually apply to your actual text. Now, lower arc pretty much does what this is. It like, kind of gives like almost like a shield look. It kind of like makes it a little bit like curved on the top and like a lot more on the bottom side. Uh, you can keep going for it. You can put the bend up if you want so you can see you can make it really dramatic. Uh, you can do the same thing with like, um, something like bulge. You can make it bulge towards you, right? That's pretty good. Uh, but I wouldn't do it so dramatic. If you're going to do that, I would say keep between either negative 15 or positive 15 just because that's not incredibly terrible and it doesn't look incredibly like kind of sloppy in a way, you know what I mean? If I put it at maybe 10%, that's pretty good. Yep, but the one I want to do is actually, I want to do bulge, but I want to make it negative. That way it actually goes toward the inside. You can see it came toward me, but if I put toward the negative side, you can see it's going to actually go, you know, farther back. And I love this one just because it looks best in my opinion. It's just kind of like my preferred one. So I'm going to put negative, uh, or what is it? I'm just going to put negative 10. I think 10 is pretty good. Negative 11, whatever. That's pretty good, right? Awesome. So you can see it does like that nice little simple bulge. Uh, toward the like further away from us. So this looks really good. I'm happy with this and I, what I'm gonna do now So make a duplicate of this actually right now So I'm gonna hold alt like I did before and make a duplicate put all the way on the bottom and we're gonna keep it on the bottom For now, I'm a whole or excuse me hide the top layer here, which is our top uh, uh, Text and I'm gonna go to the bottom one and I'm gonna quickly just make this a object So I'm gonna go to object go to expand and you're gonna see these two things here It's gonna span object and fill make sure this was both filled or clicked excuse me checked Press OK, and this will make it into like a basic, like basic, it'll make, make it into a basic shape. And which means like you can kind of like move either one if you want to. So if you want to get creative and stuff like that, you can. Um, but for this, I'm just going to turn off the fill, turn on the stroke, take my stroke, put the same color on. So basically the same thing I'm doing on the outside of this, I'm doing for the text. So outside of stroke line, and I'm going to go to here, put it about 30, I think. Right. That's a pretty good amount. And I'm down for that. So basically, we've completed the the issue of you know applying all the strokes in the background. So you don't have to worry about that too much anymore. Realistically, now what's going to be happening is kind of like editing the text to make sure it looks you know good. But we're actually not completely done. You can see these little ins insides here. You're going to have to actually fix that manually if you have a text that, of course, has you know a more spaced out actual you know letters in their text or in their fonts. I'm going to quickly turn this back on. I'm going to make this also uh, white. 
And before, well, I'm just going to actually go ahead and make this one object as well, because why the hell not? And I'm just going to make this white. And okay, so basically to fix this this right here, this back one, so you have no more like white space, because we want to make sure it's actually completely filled in. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to have to manually do it yourself. So click a new layer right above that layer. I'm going to go click in, use my pencil, which is uh, the uh, press P on your keyboard for the actual shortcut. And it's this tool right here. And you're just going to have to basically zoom pretty far in, find out where this actual point ends over there. And of course, click over here, click and drag because this is an arc. And I'm going to take this point. I'm going to hold control. I'm going to hold this. And I'll move this toward here. And I'm going to say to myself, what's a pretty good, like, you know, what's pretty good right here? This is okay. I know it's not going to be complete. Oh, let me turn this off really quick. I know it's not going to be completely perfect because this is an S now. However, the S does go below everything, so it kind of like makes sense. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm going to click all the way around, make sure I cover this white space. I'm going to go around this white space, right? I'm going to make sure I get this right here. I'll make sure I get this little part right here with this Y or this W, excuse me. And the space in between the T and the W, I'm going to make sure I completely fill that as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click it, put it back on the fill, and I'm going to change my fill color. By the way, what I'm doing to select the colors, I'm using my eyedrop tool. I already have a color a color here, like blue, uh, white, black, that are all fill colors and not show colors. So if I can just click this, or not that one, okay, this one right here, it actually completely fills in the color with the same exact color and the same exact uh, fill path as this. So I don't have to actually you know, go into here and then manually put the color back in. I can just kind of pick a color from my mascot design, and there we go. So I can see now it fills in the space and that is what you guys want. So basically you're gonna have you know, this empty space which looks kind of weird and does not look clean. And if you click this, you can see now we actually apply the uh, you know additional uh, shape to it. So it fills in the actual space and it looks good. Now the same thing you have to do again one more time toward the actual top layer. This is actually our top text, just so you guys know because it's white and you won't be able to see it in the thumbnail. We're gonna make a duplicate of this one. We're gonna go ahead and apply the stroke to it. And we're gonna apply the same stroke as this one right here. But I'm, of course, I'm going to make it a lot lower, like 25 maybe. Um, 25 is pretty good. But is it on the outside? It's not on the outside. So I'm actually going to make it a little less. Maybe like, what do you guys think? Like 17? I think that's pretty good. So we're going to have to do the same exact thing for this one right here. So let's do that right now. So click on this end. Click on this end. Click and drag. Make sure, you know, make an arc for yourselves. And then hold control. Select this extended point here. And then make sure you kind of go through it once again. Right? See, so there's no space. There's a lot more empty space here. So I actually have to make sure I go through it in the entire thing. There we go. I kind of like just made my own little path going through. And then basically, just like so, fill it in. And there we go. Fill it, of course, with the same exact color. And then you get something like this. Now, if you guys want to, you can do the same thing on the top layer. As you can see, this it's, it's empty here as well. So I'm going to have to make another new layer. And then do the same thing on the top just because I wanted to make sure that there's no empty space. There's space here and there's space here. We want to get rid of that. We don't want to make sure. We want to make sure it's completely beautiful and looks good and everyone's happy just like so. And we're going to kind of just go through it, right? And then make sure we fill that in. So what I filled in was this part right here, as you can see, right? So now we're pretty much almost done. At the same point, we actually are done. What you can do is kind of like, you know, you can since we did actually make this into a object our actual text into an object and no longer one like you know kind of text path you can actually click on multiple letters and then change to like to whatever couple you guys want and then you're pretty much set in stone you're really good to go so if you ever want to like go back into it and kind of like make strokes bigger and whatnot if you guys want to make it you know the blue stroke here maybe you want to make it bigger because it's too like thin for you you just want to click on it click on this target circle click on the stroke and just make it go up however you're gonna have to you're gonna actually have to fix that thing you did here you can either probably like kind of like make it big with control T or uh, command T or whatever, or no control T it's control T and then kind of fix this again, just because, you know, you want to make sure it's still good and all, you know, nice and done evenly. Right. So if you want to make that bigger as well, you probably have to make this one bigger as well. Um, where is it? Is it this one? No, it's definitely, where is it? It's in here, isn't it? Nope. Where'd it go? This one right here. Boom. And make this one a little bit more thicker. So it's just kind of like a thing. And then we're going to take this, and kind of drag these back down and it's just it just depends what you guys want to do so i kind of didn't like it because it was too thin for me so i'm just going to fix the choke and then fix of course these two things up here as well all the other like extended like fill paths or the fill shapes 
That way we're looking good and all that cool stuff. And basically, once you're done, you said you're satisfied. This looks really good. And it looks like the text is also applied to the actual mascot design. So hopefully I explained it as best as I could. Because it was one thing that was really I really struggled with. I don't know why I struggled with it. So I said to myself, there's probably other people out there who struggles with it. So I'm going to actually do the video on it. And I hope you guys enjoyed. I really, really do. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for enjoying these logo design tutorials. I've been really enjoying them. Also, After Effects. Like, I'm, I've been really, I've been trying to push it. As you can see, I kind of have been using After Effects to edit my videos and not Sony Vegas. So, hope you guys enjoy. I'm really, really trying super hard. And thank you guys so much for the support lately. I've been getting like 50 subscribers daily. It's, it's really freaking beautiful. I love you guys so freaking much. Please freaking keep smiling. Stay positive and stay productive, guys. I will talk to you guys later. Sisso HQ out. Peace. God, you guys are so beautiful.